it's me, Sean Capri and Lincoln Capri, and welcome to episode 103 of We the Gamer Cast. It's the official podcast of WeTheNerdy.com, and it publishes on iTunes and Google Play and Mother Loving YouTube every single Monday. Thank you so much for listening and being here and subscribing. Thumbs up on the video, rating us on iTunes, sharing all of the things that you do, even uh, letting me know that you're listening. That is very nice. Supporting us on Patreon.com slash Make Us Better. Supporting this show, the Nintendo PlayStation Podcast, and If We Ran Nintendo. Just like our amazing executive producers, Nick Militia from Next Level Games, Joel Brooks, James Johnson, Dr. Doom, Jesse Armstrong, Sheldon Benedict, Lincoln. Do you want to get on this? Because Glocko Schaefer... And David Ray also, he's just kind of looking around. He's with me, by the way. It's just us. He's not sleeping this week. Uh, he's made sure that he's not going to be sleeping. I tried to put him down. I thought I might do a quiet intro, but that ain't happening. So here he is in my lap. But my goodness, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Because if you're new, here's the deal. Every week, I have sweet hangs with a stranger from the internet. And we talk about video games and life and so much more. Oh my goodness, so much more. We have a couple episodes coming up, guys. But if, uh, if you want to be part of the show, I'm getting a, a notification that is irrelevant right now. If you want to be part of the show, tweet at me, at Sean Capri, Sean like Connery Capri, like the pants. Last week, Mark Carabin, the Canardian, Warp Whistle Podcast. I feel like since this show has gone video, um, I don't know, man. Like, it seems like this, this is new energy. Like, it's, it's challenging me in a new way and forcing me to come up with just a different angle i don't know what it is because it's still conversations like the conversations are still over skype they've always been video sometimes people uh, have the video sometimes they don't but for some reason feels different doesn't it is it just me it, it, maybe it's maybe it is just me but i i feel i feel uh, rejuvenated and i feel like it's good so i hope you guys are enjoying the video on youtube.com slash we the nerdy uh, lincoln is enjoying it Obviously, with him sitting in my lap, we're gonna we're gonna get right to the conversation with Ryan Black from Nintendo Nostalgia. This is um, I've been saying this a lot lately, a long time coming. I've got a long list of uh, of people I've been wanting to get on the show. Ryan is I've been uh, admiring Nintendo Nostalgia for a little while. Lincoln's been on the show now. That was a long time coming as well. We've been talking about him for long enough. Um, but before we do, I wanted to give a shout out. I just did a. Um, a 10 kilometer run for my friend Justin Ching, who unfortunately passed away a couple years ago. Um, this was a run for suicide prevention. We're going to get into um, a little bit more of that next week. Really, like, really getting into why I run. That's a conversation that Luke Laura and I have. Um, so look forward to that. But my run I did this morning, I, was, I ran right next to his mom for the last five kilometers or 3.11 miles for most of you. And very special morning, very tough. They had a very, uh, an incredible ceremony. Um, they had like a just a singer and a guitarist play a melody and sing a song, and it was just this this quiet time uh, to think about everybody that we've lost to suicide. And uh, man, it's it is tough watching the parents just have that moment. Like more than anything, more than like it's it's hard for everybody but watching parents go through that is is insane it's very very difficult it was an emotional morning but glad to have this show and back to video games back to lincoln and it's all good guys so thank you to jules watch him anthony baker and shelna benedict for donating to to my run uh raised 900 dollars, man that uh, and like honestly like it it means so much to to the family uh more than anything so thank you guys so much for being a part of that um speaking of family speaking of babies like lincoln Congratulations to Matt Knight, Skinny Matt. Guys, going to be a dad. That's pretty great. For the first time, I probably should have made a note of that before, uh, but expecting either way, I think people say they're becoming a dad again, which I always find kind of strange. Don't know if that's even possible. But uh, congratulations, Matt. Sorry I botched this. Congratulations a little bit. And look forward to something I'm doing with TJ Centula. Centula? Again, I should probably do my homework on this stuff. Uh, TJ and I are going to be collaborating on a little something something. He reached out to me and I blushed because holy crap, kind of a big deal. Handsome man. Very cool. So look forward to that. Um, and thank you also, Michael Reeve, new patron on patreon.com slash make us better. So welcome to the family. I hope that we don't disappoint you too much. Um, but thank you guys so much. Uh, 
that's pretty much that that's gonna let's let's get right into it i've been rambling a lot these days so let's let's just get into my conversation with ryan black uh he's from nintendo nostalgia there's actually pretty fitting this episode was not really planned this way but his uh handle on twitter you can follow a metroid hunter very very fitting that we're gonna have this chat this week of all weeks it is Metroid month coming back to the 3DS, so this is amazing. Um, I know a lot of people like Metroid, but he's Metroid Hunter. He's got Metroid Hunter on Twitter. That's pretty incredible. You can follow the show, uh, Nintendo underscore NOS for Nintendo Nostalgia. Let's get right into it. Here he is, Ryan Black. <laughs> Well, I think my favorite thing about this is like the dynamic camera angle that I've got now because like you were kind of down below, but now we're up high. Uh, we could take a tour around your house if you want to do that. <laughs> I noticed um, uh, My Little Pony. I was going to say Hello Pony, which merges, of course, Hello Kitty with My <laughs> Little Pony. Um, tell me tell me what's going on in the bunk bed situation that you're in there, Ryan. Uh, this is just the attic space. Uh, we've got several futons and bunk beds and stuff up here, so just for guests and we like to open up our house to people so but who's 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 whose dolls are those this is all my wife's stuff so yeah okay okay well i was kind of hoping pile of them over here (laughs) dude that is that's really cool okay so if you guys there's more of them over in the corner oh my goodness gracious (laughs) look at this they're everywhere (laughs) okay i wasn't i wasn't 100 percent sure how the phone situation was going to be because we had some some troubles with the Mac this morning. But now that now that I've got you switching between like the camera facing you and the camera facing outwards, this could be easily the most dynamic video interview we've done <laughs> so far in the in the three that that I've done. <laughs> <laughs> so how does your wife get into all of this stuff? Is she like because because there's a certain like nerditude to. Uh, my little pony as there is with pokemon and all the things that that we're into like where right, where does right. that start with her um well nisa and my brother-in-law just were really into the show and they watched it a lot and then just kind of snowballed from there i mean yeah. nisa likes a lot of plushies and dolls and things so it was just kind of a natural thing especially like all the build-a-bear stuff that it's oh, my little pony oh <laughs> okay so like oh my goodness when when did you like when you met her was she already into that sort of thing and like that's like i'm kind of trying to get an understanding of of how like what you guys connect on because for me with chelsea there's a couple things when she threw me my 28th birthday party and my birthday is on the 28th of july and that's like your golden birthday or champagne birthday or something so so she threw me Mm -hmm. a golden coins birthday with mario stuff everywhere she had like paper mache stuff and those little that little bead art that you get that you iron together and she made like uh, all these different Mario characters. That was pretty much like a pretty solid moment for me to go. I think I have to marry her now. I think that was it. Like, <laughs> where does that where does that happen for you? Well, we met in um, in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, there was it was a, a week or weekend um, kind of intensive class mm-hmm. uh, for the college I was going to be going to there, um, music college, and so. Mm-hmm. Um, Nisa was attending there, and and they just we just hit it off from there. Uh, Nisa is very uh, at the time when when I met them, it was a uh, very punk rock style. Yeah. Um, always different colored hair and uh, vest with lots of patches and studs and things like that. So yeah. And what were you, what were you like? Um, uh, I'm pretty much a lot like how I was now. Like just you now have the the emo emo over haircut <laughs> and uh yeah just i mean i wore contacts then but other than that i mean i wore band t-shirts and yeah. jeans what kind of, that was what my kind thing. of bands man um a lot of like christian punk rock stuff um, oh, okay. was what i kind of kind of was stuck with uh 77 yeah um we've got reliant k is like my favorite yeah um of course hawk nelson love them nice so, so you're in you're in memphis for music music college what yes. what kind of music are you studying? Um, I was studying vocals, uh, modern music ministry with emphasis on vocals. So I'm a singer. What? Okay. Every now and then somebody <laughs> comes on this show and they just drop like, a, oh, I'm an engineer in me- 
like plasma. I don't even know. I'm sorry, Alejandro. <laughs> I can't remember <laughs> what exactly it was called. What is that? Describe this. Describe this program to me because I am I am fascinated right now. Um, I've always been into music. I always wanted to be in a band, yeah. and so when I had the opportunity to go to a music school, it's all about like getting you like in mock bands and okay. working with like with people who are learning how to do management and sound recording and stuff like that. Everybody's learning their own things and come together and and work together to create this kind of record label yeah. and this business behind it. And you you meet up with other students and you join this form this band and perform. And you get graded on that by the teachers there and stuff like that. You have like big performances and stuff. So it's more just than like just concerts. the music. That that's really cool to me because it's yeah. more of like yeah. an application of like you should probably learn to do something with this talent that you're developing. Like it seems to me, at like totally outside looking in, that that music school is like for the people who are already pretty talented and kind of have that musical inclination to just go lean into that a little bit more. But to mm -hmm. provide that other side, I didn't even realize was a thing. And now that I've heard it, I'm like, I can't imagine it any other way. <laughs> is that kind of what attracts? Is that like all? Is that all music school? Or is that, that this particular one that had a certain angle to it that that attracted you to it? It's this particular one. Yeah. It was it was very unique. Um, it was set in kind of a Christian setting. I wanted to keep it in that that family, mm -hmm. but it was so much more than that. It goes beyond just like worship music. It's it's actually the rock. And, and all that stuff. Like, we would do showcases where we'd, we'd just do cover stuff just to practice the songs and make them our own. Yeah. And we would do anything secular, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, I think we did uh, Live Like You Were Dying and, and stuff like that. So, uh, some, some of the, like, really classic stuff. Um, I think it was Keep Your Hands to Yourself. Uh, we did that one. <laughs> and... <laughs> I feel... I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like that could be the album of almost any christian rock music <laughs> keep your hands to yourself. wait they don't want you to do, you don't want you don't want to do that either you don't want to no i'm not gonna go there so <laughs> i gather from this and I, I sort of already knew this already but i'm gonna dive into it a little mm -hmm. bit here growing up in a christian family like is that something that's very much kind of just about where you grow up is that what everybody is doing or is it like so did you have a community around your Talk to me a little bit about growing up in a in a in a faith filled household, man. Um, I don't know. I was kind of in my own bubble. Honestly, oh, really? I didn't branch out. I wasn't very social. Yeah. Um, I went to a Christian school in my life, so I, I was lived my life in that vacuum. Yeah. So, um, I didn't branch out until college. Uh, actually, the first initial college that I went to was a local one called University of Indianapolis, and mm -hmm. and uh, I, I took some like youth ministry training programs, stuff like that. But they sent me off to this secondary school. Uh, seminary and i felt like the classes that I, I was taking at both places spent more time tearing my faith down than like me reinforcing that stuff what do you mean and so i really took a step back like um just making me question certain things yeah. and the veracity of like the bible and and stuff that and the stories and things and like how there's these other stories that existed before the bible and they they're very similar to what the bible has so the bible probably copied this or something like that right right and so like at first i thought when you think like God's word is like the ultimate and it is all all true and stuff like that. Like when you start having things that seem to contradict it, it like really throws you for a loop. And so like I had to recollect myself yeah, and man. rebuild what I what I knew, everything I knew completely unseated. But I was in that vacuum. So I needed that push to start thinking for myself and just saying, Oh, this is what my teacher said, you know. Right, right. It's it's become a growing experience for me. So, so. talk to me about the cause this is something that's extremely fascinating to me and I, I grew up uh, I've been baptized, I've been confirmed. Um, grew up in a Catholic household, but but it was far from overbearing, I guess. Like my parents were very open to. I, my brother actually explored like Buddhism for a little while, I think, and he went off and did a whole mm -hmm. bunch of other. And I'm fairly certain that my sister is kind of has gone away. And I'm not to get too much into. Well, maybe we will. I don't know. This is kind of what the show is. We just do whatever, and this is kind of where we find ourselves. Like I, I don't know, man. Like I, I, I sort of agree with a lot of. That this is, it's way too much of a coincidence for us all to be here in the middle of space and everything. And for like, for just to, like, we had the right temperature and we had like the right collection of elements. Like, we can get into a lot of the science, but like, there has to be something. So, I'm curious from your perspective, maybe we can get into this if you like. And if not, you can just like push me away. We can go talk about, we can talk about Nintendo, which I <laughs> definitely plan to get to. Um, how do you, while you're going, while you're in school 
And the whole point is almost to reinforce this. And by doing that, it's it's almost breaking things down for you to then rebuild. How are you reconciling some of those some of those points? Because that's that's not exactly a new thing, but I think that's something that a lot of people of faith have to sort of reconcile of there's knowledge and then there's there's the faith side. So where does it come for you when those contradicting type of ideas theoretically contradict? I'm not necessarily one right. overriding the other. I hope you know what I mean. Right, I understand. Um, during that time that, that my my core biblical, like, I guess, values were being shaken and, like, questioned, like, through all of that, I always felt like I had a sense of, like, con- conversation with God. Mm-hmm. And, like, if I did something wrong, like, I'd feel bad about it. But I, I talked to God about it. Like, hey, this is what I did. It was a very open conversation, like, as if, like, Jesus was sitting right next to me or something like that. And it was, it was very intense and very intimate at the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I've since gotten kind of by the wayside with all of that. Um, but that's one thing I was able to cling to was I didn't have a lot of friends at that time. Mm-hmm. And so, like, when I could go and, like, just open up a prayer, not like you're, like, thank you, God, for everything you've done. Like, it was more like just actual conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, that thing really connected me to to get through all of that because I was going through some depression things the first time I went to college. Yeah. Um, I'd stop going to classes. I'd stay up, like ridiculously late playing pokemon and stuff like that like i just wouldn't i wouldn't function and so like when i was able to just like keep that relationship and then of course i was working my job and and stuff too so it was a rough time but that was what got me through it was just feeling like i had that that friendship and that communication with god and it was kind of an open thing i always look at the churches like there is that aspect of therapy almost as well that there is a conversation Mm -hmm. And communication is is the basis for getting through any any either bout of depression or anxiety. Talking about it is is kind of like the first step. Obviously, I'm a I'm a huge believer in that. And actually, as your episode airs, as this conversation airs, the Sunday before it, I will have run um, ten kilometers raising money for uh, mental health and in support of my friend who passed away a couple of years ago. So this is obviously like very top of mind for me and. I yeah. think to a degree, I think a lot of us do deal with with some form, whether I think it's a bit of a, a, a spectrum. And um, I, I'm curious as to, was that always, was, did the church always represent that opportunity for, for therapy for you? Or was that something that you discovered kind of along the way? Because honestly, like, there's something very appealing to me about just walking into a church, whether it's a confessional or, or walking right up to the priest sitting in his office, uh, or the reverend or whoever it is, and just going, I got some things on my mind, I got some things <laughs> on my heart, and I just need to talk it over whether I'm a man of faith or not. Like, I'm curious as to your your approach when it came to therapy within within the church. Um, I would bring some big questions yeah. um, early in my life and some, some things that I'd ask a lot of different questions and things that pr- pastors weren't always prepared for or don't didn't really have a firm grasp on it anyway. So I tend to distance myself from approaching people with those mm-hmm. types of things. Um, I build strong friendships and stuff, like whether it was like instant messenger at the time, you know, AIM yeah, or yeah, whatever. Man. Like I would just – How did you find people on there? Um, I was a big Reliant K fan and they had a, a digital street team and you could go on there and just talk to people in forums and stuff. That was like my, my hangout for – a good portion of my time while that was going. And I made quite a few friends, people I consider like sisters to me and, Mm -hmm. and a couple of brothers too. So it was just a really cool time to have that and be able to just vent. And then also they would vent to me Mm -hmm. and I'm like, for whatever reason, like things would come to me. Like I I say, it's God, you know, I I feel like he was telling me like, Oh, you need to say this here. Mm -hmm. Like I was just led to say these things to help them through these times. And I felt really helpful and fulfilled and, and they were to help me through my stuff. So that is a really empowering thing to to have that to whether it's your own confidence or if it is somebody or something or if it's God helping you through a conversation to know ahead of time that you should say a thing. I think we all would like a little bit more of that in our lives, wouldn't <laughs> we? Instead of kind of why did I say that or what am I even talking about? To have to have some sort of guidance, I think maybe is kind of what. Uh, you're getting at here is it's it's mm-hmm. nice to have a mentor to have somebody looking over us to make sure that we're going to be okay is that is that another aspect of it for you yeah very much so yeah man so 
Okay, so you've kind of alluded to a few friends that you've you've met along the way. I know you've known mm-hmm. Jacob for quite some time. We're going to talk a little bit about Jacob Rush, I think. Uh, yeah, from okay. Nin- Nintendo Nostalgia, I know he's described his friendship to me, or his friendship with you to me. I want to get your side of the story, man. Where where do you guys first cross paths? When do you first high five? Uh, when does that all that all that start, dude? I mean, we've known each other forever. I mean, I was born <laughs> first, so um, <laughs> my, my mom and his mom were best friends, and so we were we always hung out whenever they'd get together. And I, of course, I would tag along because I'm I'm their kid. So yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> sweet, man. And uh, we'd always hang out and, and do video game stuff. That was what we'd always geek out about. Mm-hmm. So. That was our thing, and yeah, really, that's what it stayed. We didn't really get into any anything deeper than than just like video games. Um, we talked on the phone a lot, but nothing else really like oh. personal and stuff until talking on about the, the phone. Time... How many of us have friends <laughs> that we actually still hang out with that we grew up talking on? Like we would call their house <laughs> number. I still know neighbor Matt's yeah. um, home line, like his landline to his parents' house. I still memorize it, whether or not they've disconnected that line since then. But I still have that, dude. That is awesome. Our are your parents and Jacob's parents still friends to this day? Yes, definitely, yeah. It was like a trio. Um, it was my mom, Jacob's mom, and then uh, their other friend, Brenda. Yeah. They're like this, this three best friends thing going on. So that's still going strong today. And so you guys you guys have known each other forever. Who Was there, yeah. was there ever like a competition in terms of who had the most games or who had which game first? Or was it mostly just come over to my place because – just cause like it just kind of worked out that way. I'm always curious because back when I was a kid, like somebody had the bigger TV, that's where you went. Or somebody had like mm-hmm. the bigger couch, then you go there. Or somebody said, I've got like lime green Kool-Aid and microwave popcorn. Dude, that, that was it. That's <laughs> the winner. <laughs> so where did you guys hang out? Um, it was mostly in the early times it was hanging out just at his mom's house. Yeah. Like occasionally he'd come over and spend the night at my house, but we lived so far Same apart and then hours. phone calls were, were scarce at first because it was, wasn't in the same zone or whatever. So it was like calling long distance or something. Oh really? And so once, once the phone started getting better with that, we were able to talk a lot more. So it was, it was slow at first. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'd see each other. Maybe we'd stay a weekend over because we'd beg because we didn't see each other enough. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so, and then after that, like once the communication started improving with, with phone calls and things like that, we got into Nintendo power together oh, I love and we started it. doing, started doing tournaments at game crazy and we'd walk across the street and go to pizza hut and we'd enjoy pizza hut so like those are some big memories for us dude that's so what are you guys playing together like what are some of your first memories of of playing some nintendo together because it goes way back for you guys right right um hmm i remember jacob playing metroid 2 on his his uh, game boy nice uh, going over there a couple times. Uh, we didn't really start doing major things until GameCube. Probably mm-hmm. was when we really were focused on that. A couple times, I go over to his house and play 64. Um, I think I played Pokemon Stadium there once or twice. Yeah, man. So, so how do how do your parents deal with like inviting video games into the house? Was it was it like a pretty pretty quick thing? Like for me, it was it was probably a decade long conversation until finally like a Dreamcast finally made its way into the house. And it was only because mm-hmm. we had been doing our paper route forever and, and saved up some cash and, and that was it. But like consoles were not going to happen for us. But next door, they were happening just left, right, and center. I remember just like on a, on a whim, we were just going to the store with neighbor Matt and his parents and like, let's buy you this <laughs> game. And it was like, I think it was, it might have been Vigilante 8 for the PlayStation, <laughs> like just when car <laughs> combat was was all the, all the rage um so yeah man like was it something that your parents kind of introduced as like here go go entertain yourselves or had you somehow expressed interest somewhere else um video games had been as far as i can remember i've had video games in my life whether it was just on uh the hewlett packard or oh, like dude, the yes the, the coleco vision <laughs> Yeah, and television. I, I would either I would play like ColecoVision and like PC stuff. Um, like there was this fire fire truck rescue Fisher Price <gasps> game that I, was I had a that lot. game. <laughs> oh, that's amazing! Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, I need to write that down. Oh, that is awesome! Fire truck rescue, yes. Oh god, that just it's very rare that the feels get hit that hard all of a sudden. <laughs> That's so weird. Okay, go on. I'm sorry that I got a little excited. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's good. Um, I remember playing on the ColecoVision. Uh, it was like the carnival game. Uh, <laughs> there was original Super Mario Brothers. 
<laughs> I'm so taken by that. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I think like the biggest treat um, was the uh, ColecoVision Adam's computer allowed for playing video games on cassette. And I had this cassette that was like Buck Rogers and the Planet of Zoom. I like oh played that. Like gosh. that was one I begged to play. Yeah, man. So this was like my early, early memories. Um, I'd go over to my grandparents to play the NES. Mm-hmm. Um, they had one over there. Um, Why did they have one? Um, I don't know. My grandpa was always into buying like the latest like novelty thing. That's the and coolest. So that was something he picked up. Yeah, I had Duck Hunt and Mario Super Mario Brothers. So that what, was the first things we had. What's the age like? Like my so I'm 33. My grandma's like 92. So like, there's kind of a. My parents were a little older. I think she might have been. I don't know what the math is on this to be honest with you. But I all I know is that growing up, I always looked at my grandparents, and everybody else had grandparents that were like 15 years younger. Are your Knowing that your grandparents had um, video games in the house, I'm assuming maybe a little on the younger side, or are they just hip and cool and with it? I think at the time, like 50s and 60s yeah. was, was about where they were. Because um, I'd, I'd play, like, at the time I was really young, I would play games like uh, Sesame Street 1, 2, 3, yes. and there was another Sesame Street I'd do, and like this Where's Waldo game that I would oh, play. Oh, the Where's Waldo game. Did you have the books? <laughs> I did not know. Oh, the books were the best, and I had I had <laughs> one that unfortunately got absolutely destroyed. It was the yellow one. I never knew what oh, the titles were. Yeah. There was like the yellow one, there was a blue one, and then there was a red one. And like I don't know what it was. These things were like all the hit, and I remember being kind of super. Maybe that was the first time I was super aware of a certain toy or certain thing being the kids thing. Kind of like what uh, Tickle Me Elmo ended up being, and and things like that. Uh, yeah. like there's Sophia now for babies. They shove this giraffe in their face. Apparently that's the thing. But I remember being like oddly aware as a kid that this is the thing that every kid gets. And it's almost like, it's almost like a staple in a way. And man, I just, it's, all, that was like a, where's Waldo was kind of like the original, um, collectathon instead of doing yeah. like Donkey Kong stuff. You, you go around, you go like, wait a minute. There's more things to find than just Waldo. Who is this wizard guy, and why? Why? <laughs> yeah. did, why did um, Waldo drop his camera over there? Where's his cane? Like seriously, dude, pick up your crap. I freaking love it. So like, you and Jacob playing games together, growing up. Like, did you guys were you guys always attached at the hip, or were there times as as you're growing up that you kind of move away from each other or come back together? Because like now you guys talk every single week. On Nintendo mm-hmm. Nostalgia, you've created a, an amazing podcast. But, like, where does your friendship take the journey? Because growing f- growing up from kids through elementary, like, middle school, things change, man. Like, a lot changes. Things that you care about, things that you're embarrassed about, things you want to strive towards. <laughs> Girls come into the picture. Like, yep. what does all that look like with you and Jacob, dude? Girls um, flocking to yeah. him like crazy. He's all <laughs> jacked and he's a super saiyan. Oh, he was—he was quite a butterball uh, back then. A butterball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were both pretty chubby, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to say he's, he's probably gonna get on me for this, but he used to say his medicine was Mountain Dew and cheese balls. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like he had to take his medicine every day. <laughs> that sounds like throw up. Actually, a little bit. That sounds like just instant throw up. But I get it. But what about controllers, yeah. man? I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you there. What about the controllers? Do you guys care about like getting the crap all over the control? You can't you can't be eating Doritos and going right back to the to the N64. I'm pretty sure we washed our hands before touching the controllers. We we're pretty pretty sticklers about yeah, that. Man. We didn't like dirty controllers like that. So at neighbor Matt's house, we his parents would throw us uh, towels so that we just have them on our laps <laughs> if we if we wanted to do that. And of course that doesn't do anything. It was such right, like right. A, like well at least you're wiping your hands, but anyway, I interrupted. So growing up with Jacob, uh he's eating cheese balls and drinking Mountain Dew and throwing <laughs> up everywhere. Uh, <laughs> were you guys like um, I said, were you attached to the hip the whole time? Um for the most part, I got him into the uh the instant messenger scene mm. and uh kind of encouraged him to do that stuff. And he made some friends, made some same of the friends like I had. Um, there was a time where he was, he was, he liked this girl growing up. And so, uh, that didn't work out. And so he was kind of on a rebound or whatever. It was talking with a girl on there and, uh, they were like on again, off again all the time. It was all digital and all just kind of, they they never met. Right. Right. It was, it was kind of superficial in that, but like they're on again, off again all the time. And he'd just be on this emotional roller coaster. And I remember telling the, the girl, 
um, that I don't think that they should be with with Jacob anymore. They shouldn't like be lead him oh. on this like on this yo-yo and stuff. I told this. Well, it got around to Jacob, and Jacob got really hurt because he thought I was just trying to tell her to break up with him, and like not in any context, just like I was against him or something. And that kind of drew drove a wedge in our friendship. That was our first thing. Like we were like thick as thieves before that but then that kind of Girls, like really man. hurt that we didn't talk for like a year <gasps> i think it was if not more right <laughs> like, you were we trying just... to help him <laughs> but at the time it didn't make any sense like it didn't <laughs> matter to him <laughs> and but it didn't help that later i ended up dating this girl but the anyway. same girl <laughs> yeah i should have learned but that was my first big heartbreak <laughs> surprise Ryan. <laughs> oh, Ryan, I'm backing away. Oh, oh, oh. But it was much later. Anyway. Oh, Ryan. <laughs> I, I remember asking Jake if it was okay, and he's like, yeah, because it was much, much later, and we were talking again. Uh, he had come to me about being in a band, and so we kicked off our friendship from that. <laughs> Forgiveness indeed is divine, my friend. <laughs> Holy... <laughs> I'm amazed. That, oh, Jacob, man, what a what a heart on this guy. <laughs> so was that awkward at all, or how many years ago and is this? I, this must be a lifetime ago that you're talking about this. You're like, why did I even bring was, this up? Sean asked questions. <laughs> it was forever ago. Um, I was definitely in probably a sophomore year. Yeah, man. Maybe it was. Yeah, it doesn't. So. It's all water under the bridge, and that's the best thing about friendships that go on for that long is that you know that ultimately. Yeah. You're going to end up coming back together and playing more video games. Was it ultimately <laughs> like, so a year goes by, who's missing who more? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't really know. Um, and was it only until after the breakup that, you, that you're like, oh man, that wasn't worth it? I felt like I did the right thing in that because I didn't want him to be hurt. Yeah. And so, like, I was, I remember feeling really, really sad about the whole situation. And I'm like, well, eventually, maybe he'll stop talking, he'll start talking to me again. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm just, I'm kind of, this friendship's kind of done. And I was really sad about it the whole time. Yeah, like, man, I just, of course. that always pop in my head and be like, man, I wish I could hang out with Jacob again. But he's just, he's not, I, I heard him really bad. And I, I, I got that. And I understood everything. So, so when he actually, when he actually started talking to me again and, and being friendly and stuff, I'm like, oh, well. I was completely like caught off guard because I didn't think that that was ever going to become a thing again. I thought I just lo lost that friendship forever. Do you remember the moment? And... Do you remember like that must have been something? Like, did you guys like cross paths in the hallway at school or something? Or did he call you? Did he leave you at a note and some chocolates? Um, I think it was a phone call or maybe some sort of correspondence online. Um, mm. That's actually pretty was, cool, man. Because like, it's not just oh, hey, it's you. Fancy meeting you here at the Seven <laughs> Eleven, grabbing your Mountain Dew and cheese balls. Uh, it's like he kind of went out of his way. So that's okay. That's pretty cool, dude. And so everything has been good ever since, basically. Yeah, yeah, everything's been great. So then when we had, sorry, go ahead. We had a rough patch um, when we were in the band together, um, mm -hmm. and I got kicked, well, quote unquote, kicked from the band. I wasn't technically kicked from the band. They just voted me out of singing in the band oh. and that's the only thing i knew how to do so i was like well they're like, oh you can pick up another instrument i'm like i don't really have anything just else. like that that's punk and music like... though isn't it <laughs> punk bands are just like now i'm playing the guitar now i'm on the drums now i'm on bass playing the triangle they just switch out every every song it's just <laughs> who's doing what so i guess that's yeah. that's part of the gig dude you just gotta you just gotta have 16 different instruments that you can play when you're in a punk band do you have tattoos oh uh, i've got one what is it it was something I drew as a kid a long time ago. It kind of represented my faith. Um, that's why I have like some some of the things that I have. It's a uh, black phoenix. That's uh, awesome. Bee phoenix. You'll see that. It's actually a kind of representation of my faith. I drew this this stick figure like phoenix, mm -hmm. and I had a cross at the heart, and I wrote kind of like a little like saying like how like Jesus uh, died for my sins, and like a phoenix uh, was reborn from the ashes. I've never put that basically, together. That is so cool. The phoenix the phoenix took on all the sin, turned black, and then like you know died and then like burst into flame and rose again that's kind of what my tattoo is um see if i can get, get a good picture of it let's get it on my arm maybe if i can roll my sleeve oh up well yeah enough. man definitely i don't know if you can see it okay i'm like leaning over as if i'm moving the camera dude that's sweet yeah man that's 
This sounds like a video game to me. I don't mean to totally like <laughs> marginalize it. I think that it could be one of the most profound games ever. But that story itself is like such a cool. Like it wouldn't even have to be first like so in your face that it's that it's. But like the the allegory there, I think, is really profound. And I just never, I had never thought of that, dude. So who was Jacob Alone who kicked you out of the band? Or was it him no, with everybody uh, else? <laughs> it was a guitarist that he found. We finally found someone to complete the band. It was, it was a guitarist. Mm. And um, he was very... He took control a lot. And he started doing things his way. And he'd throw a fit if there wasn't that yeah. way. And it's just kind of his mentality. It's not necessarily him being a bad guy. Um, it's just... When he gets something in his head, that's what he, what he does. And so um, everyone kind of decided that they didn't need another singer after the guitarist who we hired on started singing and it was just Jacob and the guitarist and damn and my vo- dang vocal it. style my vocal style was completely different from theirs how would you it describe almost it? didn't lend itself um i have more of an airy uh whiny punk pop sound and less of the gravelly like so i sound more like a blink 182 or mm-hmm. um kind of the thousand foot crutch uh, guys yep. uh, trevor's um, vocal range um, I sing a lot higher. Um, I've had some training since then. Of course, probably lost it all because I'm out of practice. But <laughs> when was the last time you sang? Do you sing in the car? Um, oh yeah, I sing in the car yeah, all the time. Man, I don't sing very well though because I don't keep the proper posture and I, I don't do warm ups. So I, I'm really, really out of shape. I think uh, my my college vocal instructor would uh, throw a fit. But... <laughs> oh man, and that's the thing. It's always in your mind now. Every time you kind of like yeah. do something that's like a little out of practice. Like, oh, I should have. You kind of snap yourself back in. You maybe I don't want that. It's a lot of discipline, man. It's a lot of discipline. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so recording is obviously something that is familiar to you with the with the band, and you and Jacob have had mm-hmm. a lifelong friendship. Um, I want to hear your side of the story, dude. For starting Nintendo Nostalgia, there was one day. Uh, people who listen to this and listen to me and Bobby know this know this quite well, but. Just out of nowhere, Bobby says, hey, man, I got this guy. He's interested in doing a podcast, and he wanted to ask me this, ask us a couple questions. Do you want to hang out after after we do it for Nintendo? And I'm like, yeah, of course. And Jacob Rush shows up, and he's got all these ideas, and he's got this fiery passion for Nintendo. Mm-hmm. And I'm getting the sense, man. I'm like, this, this kid needs to be talking about Nintendo on a weekly basis. Like, the, he needs <laughs> an outlet, and he needed a little bit of – little bit of focus and bobby and i told him a bunch of stuff that i actually think showed him what not what he didn't want to do and then that helped him find nintendo nostalgia and the name is so perfect i've talked to i was talking to dave moore just the other day about this actually how you guys have managed to move in and own nostalgia and i don't know (laughs) how you managed to do that but like but your focus on that word and the word itself comes up in the podcast probably 17 to 27 times give or take and i'm just i've loved what what has happened with it but where do things start for you i don't know like where where your connection to podcasts even start because i always assume that that's like people become fans of podcasts before they actually want to start one because unless you're sort of in the business why the hell would you start a podcast (laughs) unless you're a big fan of them I had heard about podcasts, but they weren't on my radar at all. Yeah. So when Jacob came to me, like I go into podcasting without any knowledge of what's going on. Um, but I've done recording before, so it wasn't completely like foreign to me. Mm-hmm. Um, we'd done some video blogs and stuff, so that was not something like alien. But at the same time, like I think I maybe listened to one or two podcasts before I got into it. But it was definitely something that I was thrust into unaware, and um, I was like, what? "Yeah, talk what about do you Nintendo." Mean thrust sure, into I'll do unaware. It. I just kind of jumped into it. He's like, do you want to do this podcast thing? I'm like, sure, let's do it. And I didn't really listen to podcasts at all. Like, I, I hadn't listened it. to one before. I had no idea about the community. Like, I was like, that was one of those things like I put on the back burner. Like, I heard that a band had a podcast. I'm like, okay, I'll listen to you guys sometime. Yep. Never did. Yeah, 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 <laughs> totally. How are you going to fit that into your day? You know, like, <laughs> I've already got Nintendo to play. I've already got things to do. Um, so, like, does he basically take the lead in terms of getting you your recording equipment or you already had it with the band and stuff like how did from um, a technical aspect how did things start for you um i had some things over time like i have my mac it's ancient that i had trouble getting working um but i got that through college and so i had mm. that for great great for recording and things like that sure, so sure. 
And then were you um, worried about like, what were your what were your first thoughts? I'm sure that it was. I think from from my recollection, it was Jacob who comes up with Nintendo nostalgia as the concept. You guys are going to talk about an old video game and gush over it. Um, what what were your reactions to him? Like I, I gathered that you were very mellow and agreeable type of person at least in this sense yeah that you're just kind of like yep. whatever you say jacob i just want to i just want to hang out and talk video games with you this this sounds awesome or sometimes i like to ask this type of question because you find that there was another idea that was left on the chopping room cutting room floor chopping it's it's dead on hmm. the floor because you edited it what <laughs> what were some of the things that you guys talked about before it ended up being nintendo nostalgia um he really came to me right about the time like a couple days before he came up with the name with you guys yeah um and so like he started talking to me hey do you want to do this and then he came up with the name and said hey i've come up with the name do you like it i'm like yeah i like it that's cool and <laughs> i had to be kind of coaxed into this because i was kind of skeptical like oh well, i'll do a couple do it a couple times mm -hmm. and maybe nothing will happen with it you know maybe it'll be it'll be good and that'll be great but i was kind of kind of pessimistic about it i guess mm. but it's become so much more than that. Like it's, it's a great outlet for me now. Isn't that the best? And like, I didn't know I needed that. <laughs> that's the thing, man. And that's, uh, I feel like these, it, it seems like happenstance. It seems like coincidence that I just happen to be friends with Jacob and he just happened to want to do a podcast. And it just so happens to be like this amazing outlet for me. But to my point before this, like space is huge. The universe is infinite. And for this to be happening all right now, just, pretty coincidental and i have a hard time wrapping my mind around all the different factors and all the different things that happen to get us to the points in our lives that we get to and i think that you were meant to do the show with jacob you were always like from the moment you guys met you would have this decades later you would have this thing that would make sure that even though there are forces that pull adults apart that pull kid friends like lifelong friends drives them in different directions there's this podcast that you guys have that is based in the time that you guys forged the friendship and that's why <laughs> i've always really enjoyed nintendo nostalgia like from the very early days from the from the time that you guys even said that it was a thing to now about a year later have you passed your year anniversary i think you have it's in october holy crap really i don't know why i yep. thought it was like dead middle of the summer so oh, we got some stuff planned oh, for that. Oh, so. congratulations! How does so? Because so I've actually like watched the kind of like the graduation that that we all go through, and I think that's the exciting thing of get jumping on a podcast right from the start is is watching the hosts learn what the hell the show is and morph it into <laughs> something they never imagined, and meeting people that they never thought that they would. Um, what in in so many words, like what does Nintendo nostalgia mean to you? Um, it's really that that connection to memories and stories. Yeah. That's such a big thing for me, like recollecting those things. And also, we just opened up the show uh, with a hotline um, that people can call in and share their nostalgic memories with us. And just hearing those stories and having those connections with people is so like invaluable to me. Like just mm -hmm. to feel that connection with them and the love for video games. Just like I'm a very very emotional person. Like I'm very very tied to emotions. So when I hear other people's like happiness with Nintendo and their memories, it's just it does my heart so good, and that's extremely fulfilling for me. Oh, that's the best. How has your how has your wife done with all? Like how do you manage um, the podcast? Because I think that that's something that we all kind of deal with as well. Is, Hey, by the way, I'm going to go lock myself in a room for a couple hours a week <laughs> and talk at a screen. How has was that something that you had to uh, cultivate in the family or like, is this something that that was a little easier? Because definitely I was projecting on Ch Chelsea was like, even in her vows, she's like, I want you to chase your dreams. I want you to accomplish everything mm -hmm. that you want to do in this being one of them, I, I was just getting into writing about video games and I'm very, I was very nervous about it, even just putting my word out there for people to read or trying to become a voice, I guess. And she was, she was pushing me the entire, even before we got married. And then as if you need confirmation uh, at mm -hmm. that time, you should probably know if this is a good idea or a bad idea um, by the time you're saying I do. But within her vows, she is confirming this is a thing that I should be doing. So I'm always curious whether or not it's it's that easy for some people or if there's a little bit more conversation. Uh, I could totally understand that that it would be a bit of a wedge because it's 
this is me time. Like this is definitely something that that I dedicate to. Um, I have. 100 not even just blessing but encouragement and confidence and amazing support from her so i'm curious have you rambled on a little bit sometimes i do that just to let you generate (laughs) a bit of a bit of an answer just so you know that ryan that's why i ramble um (laughs) my wife has been supportive like i went to i went to nisa and i was like hey um jacob wants to do this podcast and we talking about video games and right from the get-go nisa was completely and totally like backing me yeah man. and like encouraging me to do this because i was skeptical i was up i was pessimistic about it mm-hmm. and so when nisa comes says, i think you should do it i think it'd be really good for you like oh well okay uh, i guess i'll do it and i had i had that back and so i had that little bit of a push even more so what were you and, nervous like, about what were you pessimistic about you know i don't really know looking back now isn't that like, the funny I don't know thing? What, I was, worried what about was I worried about? Totally. But you knew that there was there was some nerves, maybe just some hesitation. Um, were you worried about people listening at the time? Because I know that that's a, that was that's one a of thing. it. Was I didn't think anyone would listen. We wouldn't become successful, or anyone would care about what we have to say. And even then, like I'll, I'll talk myself into that. Oh well, no one really watches the show, and and I'm like I try to get some numbers and find out. Oh, how many people are watching the show? Because I don't really feel like anybody's watching the show. Yeah. And like I just don't know. Like, if I'm heard and I want to make a difference in the world anyway, so, like, it's kind of cool. Like, I feel like I, I'm kind of a, a step behind Jacob. Like, Jacob is the main co-host, and I'm I'm not as well known, and that's why I'm kind of branching out and jumping on your show and trying to get out there. I just want to get to know you guys in the podcast community and m- become known and become liked, I guess, uh, if I'm likable. <laughs> Definitely, dude. Yeah, man, that's what this is all about. And that, like, whether or not people have a podcast or not is, like, is the last thing that, that people need to come on the show. You're on your you're on your phone right now. Like, that's the way that we're recording the show. And that was, that was ultimately the vision was, like, anybody who might want to get into podcasting or who is obsessed with video games can come on here and talk about stuff. And it doesn't, like, there's no commitment. And then the last thing I expected to find out was that, I'm not the only idiot in this world who decided to start a podcast. In fact, there are trillions of other people <laughs> our age and and uh, who who decided to do this whole thing. Ryan, I've had a really amazing time chatting with you, dude. I always end uh, the conversations with, what are you looking forward to for the rest of the year? But now I'm going to change it, I think, a little bit too. Okay. Because we're, we're now into get, getting into the fall. One of my favorite holidays of the entire year is Thanksgiving, and not a Canadian Thanksgiving. The Canadian Thanksgiving is is terrible. It's an it's an embarrassment, <laughs> it's an abomination. American Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays that I'm just totally huh. adopting. So as we as we get closer to to the fall, snow is about to is about is about to fall. In the fall, snow falls in Canada. If I were to put you on the spot right now and ask you what's your game of the year, is it too much to assume that it's Zelda? Um, well, I haven't played Metroid yet, so that could be a big thing. Because <laughs> Metroid answer. is is my biggest uh, like of Nintendo course. franchise. I love Metroid over anything else, and so that depends on how well that does. Mm-hmm. Um, but Breath of the Wild is is has unseated my Super Metroid as all time favorite game. Um, so it depends on how well they do with the Metroid series uh, going forth, especially with this uh, remake of the second one. Yeah, man. So, so okay. This is why I, I leave time for this question. This is never meant to be a like, and we're done. This yeah. is always meant to just kind of discover anything that I may have missed here. You have absolutely no problem with saying that like a 3DS game potentially could be your game of the year. And I think that is awesome. I think that's very rare, especially with the Switch being a thing now. But even before, we've had great games on the 3DS that really don't even get pulled into the conversation i'm gonna put you on the spot another time because you are you're on a nintendo podcast which actually wouldn't help me at all if if somebody asked me this question i'm not sure what i would answer Mm -hmm. what are some games on the 3ds that may have been in the running for you for for game of the year in in previous years like for me actually you know what i'll give you an answer off the top of my head uh a link to the um a link between worlds would have been in the running for sure because I think that might be my favorite 2D Zelda, maybe. Well, hmm. And now we're going for a tour around Ryan's house, in case anybody's wondering what I am just is. stepping over here to my 3DS collection and seeing what I have here. Show, show <laughs> the viewers. What are, we, what are we looking at here? Uh, I don't know if the lighting's great, but... We got this. I'll just pull up some of the... Uh, the roof there, dude. 
Oh, this is a great collection. Oh, God. Pokemon. Some games in here. Some of them are doubles because, I, of course, I got some for Nisa as well and yeah. stuff. I have some Animal that don't Crossing have cases. For you. Animal Crossing's got to be up there. Um, yeah, Animal Crossing New Leaf. I've got that. I actually lost my copy. Um, it was something that me and my wife would do, and we would like go on dates to the island. What island? Just, we really enjoyed that. Um, in New Leaf. Oh, okay. Uh, for 3DS. <laughs> Not Wild World. I don't know why I thought you went to a date for a real place. That would be that would be like, silly for me the, to assume. Yeah, we went to the island and like swim around catching fish and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. we would just like go on dates in the game, and I lost that game. But, um, you know, I'm big on Pokemon. Like, mm. when a Pokemon game comes out, I stay up like all night playing it several nights in a row. And, like, it, it kills me, but, like, I can't put that stuff down. Oh, dude, um, that's awesome. But I'm not, like, super stoked about playing the Pokemon games. I just kind of do and get caught in them. So, like, a favorite 3DS game, it's hard to say for me. Yeah. Um, I haven't had a game on the 3DS or DS, for that matter, that, that's drawn me in as much as, like, I've really been into the multiplayer stuff of, like, Metroid Prime Hunters. Oh, nice. Um, that's why my, my screen name is Metroid Hunter 101. Of course. Like, I love the multiplayer and online functionality of that. Like, even when people... I would got on later in its life before they cut the service. Like, I would get on and people were using, like, cheats and stuff mm-hmm. where they couldn't be killed and stuff. But I liked being Trace and I could just do headshots and still take out those people that are supposedly unkillable. Oh, so, I love it. I was, like, holding my own against people who are cheating. So, I, that, I like... I just really like that game. So um, when, when podcasts are going terrible. on and on about people like Metroid doesn't sell a lot and that's why Nintendo isn't making a new Metroid game and you're sitting there screaming like, I'm <laughs> over here. Give it to me. I'll yes. buy six copies. Yes, yes. I am just, I'm head over heels for Metroid stuff and there's not enough swag out there for Metroid. Like, I'm so stoked that I'm getting a keychain for pre-ordering this new Metroid that's coming out. Like, I'm just, I need more of that stuff. Like, I have, I went to Nintendo World Store, and I got the uh, This Is How I Roll yep. Metroid shirt. That is um, so good. <laughs> and uh, they had a recall on the, the – there's these Nintendo-themed pins, mm-hmm. and I kept the Metroid one, the Samus one, because I had to have that one. Like, I, I didn't even care if it was recalled. I'm keeping this because I can't get enough Metroid in my life. <laughs> Obviously. Well, I'm excited for you, and that's the thing that I love doing about the show is discovering what people are excited about and knowing that there's something right around the corner for them to just – just gush over i'm so i'm so happy for you and i'm so glad that we got to have this chat we've referred to your twitter a couple of times here but tell everybody in the world where they can find you online and and hit you up you're also is your twitter hidden or secured or something like do people have to like send in requests for you like what's all what's the whole deal with you online man i don't really know i uh, i get friend requests but i don't know if people can find maybe me readily or not protected if... maybe that's it I saw a little lock if, if by they are. Name, I think. Oh, if they are, I'll, I'll unlock Let's it. Let's unlock it! Show that. everybody! Yes! You already have <laughs> yeah, a, um, a, sort of an anonymous name, so Metroid Hunter. Yep. yep. At Metroid Hunter is where you can find me. Sweet. Uh, and what about the what I, about the podcast, man? Of course you can find us at Nintendo Nostalgia. Um, it's Nintendo Nostalgia underscore Nostalgia. Or Nintendo underscore NOS. Sorry, I usually have this stuff like memorized. I'm putting you on the spot. That's all right. <laughs> it's all good um you can find us on our facebook at uh facebook.com slash nintendo nos and um we're pretty much everywhere um i don't have all the information here pulled up but give me a second and i will have that i can put it in the show notes um, as well of course people don't have to be taking notes okay. as we as we go sure. do this so ryan of we'll course get your... you can find us on day space yes you know part of the day space um, family podcast that's awesome man um, if you do want to call into our hotline, if there's a game that we're advertising that you you have some particular nostalgic thoughts for, uh, you can call 317-969-5690 and just let us know about your memories and stuff. We'll put you on the show. I need to I need to go ahead and do that, actually. I need to call you guys. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to berate you, mate. No, I'm going to say nice things. Ryan, thank you so much for doing this, man. This was an awesome time. Appreciate yeah. it. That is it. Oh, I think I frightened Lincoln a little bit. Goodness, it's okay, buddy. We're okay. He just got a little guy. He was not expecting me. It's been silent, and then all of a sudden, I just came back to you guys. But he's okay. He's just gonna suck on my thumb knuckle, I think, for a little bit. Um, guys, 
Amazing conversation. Ryan, I was not expecting that. Remember, follow Ryan on Twitter, at Metroid Hunter. Follow the show, Nintendo Nostalgia, at Nintendo underscore NOS. Just a great, I really enjoyed listening to that show, and those guys have come a long way from, from just having the passion come out to being students of podcasting. I really enjoyed kind of the journey that they've been on. If you guys aren't already on that, you should you should hop on because and find one that you can look in the back catalog. You can find a game that surely um, you have a lot of nostalgia for. So congratulations to those guys for coming up on a year and it's been it's been great getting to know you guys, especially during this little chat. So thank you to Ryan, thank you to you, thank you to Lincoln, everybody for being here. <laughs> Uh, remember, you can leave a comment on the YouTube video. It's at youtube.com slash we the nerdy. Subscribe on iTunes and Google Play. Leave a review. I'm going to be starting to uh, read some more of those new reviews that are popping up. So thank you guys so much for leaving those. It helps more people find the show. So appreciate that. Follow me on Twitter at Sean Capri. Sean like Connery Capri like the pants. The website is we the nerdy. Not my website. I just get to be part of it. And the, 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 the show, we the gamer cast. Follow that as well. Remember, I'm doing an Xbox show. If you guys like Xbox or if you're intrigued by Xbox, if there's something that they're doing that's kind of tickling you a little bit, I'm your guy. Dave Moore is your guy. I'm going to talk about Xbox on the drive to work. That's why it's called the Xbox Drive. You can follow that show at the Xbox Drive. I also do, of course, if you're at Nintendo with Bobby, the Nintendo guru, but you probably already knew that. Um, go to WeTheNerdy.com this week. I finally did my StarCraft Remastered review. And it's kind of a balance between if you've never played StarCraft before versus if you've played it your entire life and you have a lot of nostalgia for it. We should do a PC nostalgia show. That's that's my next show, Lincoln. I'm doing another <laughs> doing another podcast. PC nostalgia. It doesn't have the alliteration though, so we can't we definitely cannot do it. So go there, we the My StarCraft review is up. I've been playing that with uh, Jason Lacey. Shout out to Flux to Pose. That was tons of fun. Uh, I'm not horrible at StarCraft, as it turns out. I thought it was pretty bad. That was that was fun. That was that was uh, just the other night. Um, gonna wrap this up, guys. Thank you so much to our artists, Gary Gray and Adam Leonard, our video producer, uh, Antonio Guillen, and the producer of the show, The Day Space Network of Podcasts, where you can find lovely shows such as Nintendo Nostalgia and Topic Ninten- Nintendo. Tons of Nintendo stuff. The Warp Whistle Podcast is on Day Space. Next week, we get real heavy. It's a show that... I'm actually pretty scared to publish for you guys. I'm not going to lie. Um, we get real deep with Luke Lore. It's a very... It's going to be one of those episodes. And Lincoln, I promise we're wrapping up, buddy. Um, okay. Next week, huge, huge, guys. I'm not even just saying that just to be... Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Okay, we're going to do it. Otherwise, this is episode 103 of We The Gamer Cast. It's now in your ears. It's in Lincoln's ears as well. Thank you again for listening. I'll be back next week. I hope you're there too. Now it's time for... Do you want to say it? Jason! Jason. Jason. Say Jason. Say it. Say Jason. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you say anything? You've been screaming the whole time. Just say it. Anything will do. Hey. Yeah, there. Hey. Jason! 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 Sean! Sean! Sean, where are you? Jason! 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 Sean! 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 Jason! 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 Reggie Miller's looking good. He shoots a three, and it's good. Later he gets the rebound, passes it to the man, shoots it, and boom goes the dynamite. Fuck it!
asshole! Dad, I'm finished. Can I go watch TV? Let me have a look. When the parents came home from church, all their children were gone. They searched and called for them, they cried and begged, but it was all to no avail. The children have never been seen again. Pretty good. Looks like you're done. <laughs> Off you go. Please, Anne. His name. What was his name? Come closer. Fucking asshole! Closer. Jason! Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! Jason! Jason! No! 